Fox News host Jesse Waters suddenly had a change of heart on a policy that he previously did not support because, surprise, surprise, all of a sudden, this policy now personally affects him. Take a look. I, I think uh, <laughs> I think it's safe to say I'm the only one on the show that's been peed on twice today. No, not true. And, well, maybe not Gutfeld. Yes. The night's young for Greg. But um, my 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 father my father said just today, oh. um, Jesse, you better get back on the five pretty soon. Your replacements have been really good. <laughs> I, I was like, thanks, Dad. Um, but now I am I'm pro paternity. I used to mock people for for taking paternity. I used to think it was a big ruse, but now, you know, I wish I could take six weeks, but I don't know. Apparently, I have people nipping at my heels, so I gotta, oh, I gotta be back. Him. You know, one thing you I know... You gotta have the beta take six months. Yeah. So, look, I will give him credit where it's due because it is objectively good that he arrived at the logical, the humane, the ethical, and correct, quite frankly, position on this issue. But it's frustrating to me. We would make so much more progress if conservatives just tried for a minute to be sympathetic, just tried to put themselves in the shoes of someone less fortunate than them. I mean, this isn't the first time, to be fair to Jesse Waters, that a conservative has publicly denounced a terrible position that they previously had. I think the most notorious example is of Dick Cheney, because aside from the fact that he is a gigantic neocon and a war criminal, he also was a huge homophobe. And back in 2004, him and George W. Bush, they based their entire presidential campaign on banning gay marriage, literally introducing a constitutional amendment to ban gay marriages. But all of a sudden, he flips like that and has a change of heart when he realizes that his daughter's a lesbian. And now that it affects him personally, and he wouldn't want his daughter to be disadvantaged culturally and politically and legally, well, all of a sudden, gays are good. If you take what you've learned by changing your position on these issues that affect you personally and apply it to other issues, we can make so much more progress. If Jesse Waters thought, look, I don't support the $15 an hour minimum wage, but if I put myself in the shoes of a worker who only made $10 an hour, I could see why a $15 an hour minimum wage might be beneficial. I mean, that kind of gets you to think maybe the right policy isn't necessarily something that benefits me, but it's good for society. And it may one day benefit me to see universal health care. Perhaps, you know, um, making colleges free will be beneficial to my own child because if I'm no longer a Fox News host and we're socioeconomically disadvantaged, then my child would benefit from that. Maybe it's beneficial if we don't treat trans and non-binary people as if they're subhuman second-class citizens because what if my child is trans or non-binary. I mean, if you apply this lesson to other things, the world would be such a better place. Your policy positions would be a lot less egregious and selfish. But the conservatives on Fox News, Jesse Waters included, they're multimillionaires, so they're incapable of putting themselves in the shoes of the peasants because they're in that bubble, that rich, elitist bubble. And I don't necessarily know what Meghan McCain's position was on maternity leave, but she explained before on the view that she didn't really become radicalized, for lack of a better word, when it comes to the issue of paid maternity leave until she realized how important it was, surprise, surprise, when she needed it herself. Yeah, I when I gave birth, I actually had postnatal preeclampsia and I was in the hospital for a week after on a magnesium drip and it really, really kicked my butt. And I was planning on coming back to the show for the election um, in six weeks after I gave birth and I was physically unable to. I was physically unable to come. I, I was having, um, as any woman who has experienced anything like that, I uh, had to have my husband and my mother-in-law help me do everything from shower to eat. It was deeply humbling and to help me take care of Liberty. And the whole time I was thinking what a privilege it is to have have this kind of, of maternity leave. And then as I thought about it, the more angry I got that there weren't women in the rest of America that had the same kind of luxury that I had working here at The View. And then I started getting more and more angry that conservatives in particular, given that we are the family of family, or the, sorry, the party of family values, and that everything about our ideology sort of stems from the nucleus of the family, that we are leaving women in this country without the capacity and ability, unless you have an employee 
employer that allows you to, to take care of your child, to heal physically, which is something that needs to happen. And I actually think there's a lot of synergy right now for uh, a paid family leave coming from Democrats and Republicans. Everyone from Marco Rubio and Kristen Sinema and Joni Ernst have come on board. And I think this is something that's really a really dark spot for our country. We are the only developing nation that doesn't supply women with paid family leave. And if we are going to continue growing as a country and we're going to be able to give um, you know, women and families the capacity to grow in the way that we want and stop having this sort of like, you know, societal fracture that we're having and a lot of arguments are made, it's because of the fracture that's happening at home and with families. We as conservatives have to come together and allow all women in this country, no matter where they're from or their socioeconomic class, the capacity to have what I just had, which is three months of bonding time and breastfeeding and healing from an emergency C-section, which is what I had to have, and postnatal preeclampsia. And I just think um, maybe it takes personal experience sometimes to get on board, but I was actually hoping that we, as all women of The View, I'm just going to make the guess that you are all in agreement with me, that we could make this our initiative in 2021. And when we have lawmakers on the show, really put pressure on them and ask them why the women of America don't get the same kind of maternity leave that Meghan McCain got. Again, I'm glad you arrived at the correct conclusion, but if you if you just extended what you learned, if you see the lesson in this and apply it to other political issues, you'd be more right. <laughs> now, look, it is impossible to remove ourselves from our own subjectivity, right? We can't fully know what it's like to walk in the shoes of someone who isn't us. I'll never know what it's like to be a black American who is profiled by the police, but I'll also never know what it's like to be a heterosexual American who isn't accused of flaunting my sexuality if I hold hands with my spouse in public. We're all confined to our, our own subjective bubbles, but what I like to do is a mental exercise created by John Rawls. So what he created was this idea of the veil of ignorance, and I think that this really is the metric that folks should use to determine which policies they support. So imagine you are creating society and you have no idea what your position in that society will look like. So you are creating everything, the type of uh, government that exists, the international entities that will exist in this society. If you don't know what your position will be, how are you going to design that society? You don't know if you're going to be poor. You don't know which country you're going to end in uh, or end up in a developed country, uh, a poor country. You don't know what you're going to be. So obviously in that position where you're removed from your own subjectivity, you would design a system wherein it doesn't matter what country you're born in. You're still able to thrive economically. You're going to have access to water. Healthcare won't even be an issue. You're going to maximize the position of everyone in hopes that you yourself will end up in a solid place. And so basically, if folks just try to be sympathetic and imagine what it would be like to be disadvantaged and not be an elitist, born into wealth or super wealthy because they got lucky, then um, society would be a lot better. So, I mean, uh, great job, Jesse. I'm glad that you finally came to the correct conclusion now that it personally affects you. But, um, yeah, paternity leave, maternity leave, these are things that should be guaranteed because, believe it or not, human beings are not robots. And if you have a new baby, if you adopt a child, hell, even if you get a new pet. Why shouldn't you be able to take time away from work to get to know that human being or pet? Believe it or not, we can prioritize enjoying life more than just slaving away at these jobs that exploit us. I mean, we, we have to really adjust our mentality as a country because we've, for some reason, decided to value working ourselves to death and if we don't do that, then maybe we'll be lazy, but it's okay to embrace our inner humanity and acknowledge that we're people. And maybe we want to explore uh, the world. Maybe we want to do art. Maybe we just want to sit back and play video games. There's nothing wrong with that. Embracing our humanity is important. We'd all be more happier if we did that. Countries that allow for more time off of work, guaranteed vacation time, they're all happier than the United States because here we're all worked to fucking death at shitty jobs we hate. So I'm just saying, take the lesson that you've learned here, Jesse, 
apply it to other aspects of life. Think about if I were not in my position now, would I value X policy, Y policy? And you won't be conservative anymore if you're actually sympathetic.